bring home the gold. Save up to $2,400 when you combine discount package savings with cash back on selected Dodges in stock. Save big on cars. 1305 on Daytona. Save on trucks. 1650 on full-size Ram pickups. 2400 on Ram chargers. Save on imports. 1356 on Ram 50. 955 on Colt DL. See your Dodge dealer today and bring home the gold. Valley Dodge, Scottsdale Dodge, Lewis Dodge, Earnhardt's Truck Country, Dodge City, and Bell Dodge. News Channel 3, with Cameron Harper and Heidi Fogelsong, Jim Howell and Rock Rowe. Arizona's News Channel, News Channel 3. Good evening, everyone. Topping tonight's News Channel 3, a Scottsdale City worker struggling for his life tonight. He was pinned beneath the machinery of a garbage truck while firemen worked to, for, to rescue him. Witnesses say the man, whose name still hasn't been released, was a mechanic working on the truck's lifting apparatus when it suddenly came crashing down on his legs. It took firemen the better part of 45 minutes to free him using special hydraulic tools and cutting torches. His foot was severely injured. Witnesses said almost severed. He was transported to Scottsdale Memorial Hospital, where late word says he is now in fair condition, headed into emergency surgery. A microsurgery team was apparently standing by in preparation to make an attempt to reattach the man's foot. Again, we don't have his name. We'll let you know who it is if we find out. He's said to be in his 30s. Well, tonight, there is a notable absence. With critical problems like trade, welfare reform, and child care on the agenda, the nation's governors are meeting in Washington. Most of the nation's governors, that is. Arizona is not represented, and Tom Olson is here now with an answer to the question, why not? Well, Cameron, Govan, Governor Evan Meekham is the target of a recall election. He faces criminal counts in Superior Court. He has been impeached by the House. He is awaiting trial in the Senate. These troubles have received plenty of national media coverage, and today those problems and problems in Arizona state government were again receiving some notice, this time in the nation's capital. The preacher was getting really inspired, and he challenged the congregation, all of you who were on the Lord's side. While 47 of the nation's 50 governors listened to President Reagan today in the nation's capital, an entirely different dialogue was being delivered in the courtyard of the Arizona state capitol. Supporters of Governor Evan Meekham, protesting talk of tax increases, carried signs which blamed state legislators and the media for the governor's troubles. Because he has been impeached by the state House of Representatives, the governor's association had no choice but to withdraw its invitation to Mr. Meekham, which must go to the legally designated governor at the time of the meeting. And that would be acting governor Rose Mofford. The original NGA invitation went to Governor Meekham, and then when the change happened, they called us and said, would Governor Mofford like to come? And we said, we declined on the basis that she really ought to spend that time here in Arizona. Only two other state leaders declined. Florida Governor Bob Martinez, who is in Europe on state economic business, and Louisiana's controversial Governor Edwin Edwards, whose term ends in three weeks. Governor Meekham's absence and the state of government in Arizona was a topic of discussion here, say insiders, but like to it took a backseat to the appearance process. of yes, presidential candidate work. Governor Michael Dukakis of Massachusetts. Hart says acting Governor Mofford has worked hard to make certain that Arizona has missed nothing despite missing the conference. We made the contacts with the Department of Energy on the super collider issue. We followed up on any other issues that needed to be followed up on. I think we're absolutely on top of it. Now, within the past hour, Governor Meekham did tell News Channel 3 that he made up his mind in January that he would not be going to this governor's conference, that the state of Arizona would not miss anything by not being there. He also said that he has gone to Western governor's conferences in the past, but he said that in January he decided there were things that would interfere with Arizona's representation. Here. All right, Tom, thank you. The criminal trial for impeached Governor Meekham and his brother Willard has been delayed two weeks to give the prosecution more time to prepare. Superior Court Judge Michael Ryan granted the postponement to March 22nd after the Attorney General's office argued the defense had failed to provide necessary documents. We have received not one piece of paper, not one item of disclosure from either defendant Willard Meekham or defendant Evan Meekham. Governor Meekham's attorney, Murray Miller, says the trial would not be affected by the impeachment proceedings in the Senate, which are scheduled to begin next Monday. Judge Ryan also delayed setting a date for a hearing on a defense motion seeking a dismissal of charges against the governor and his brother. Television evangelist Jimmy Swaggart has appeared before elders of the Assemblies of God Church tonight 
just 24 hours after his tearful confession of sexual misconduct. And Ann Lanker tells us how that meeting went tonight and the verdict of it. Well, Heidi, it uh, seems that church members have decided to forgive and forget. Jimmy Swaggart will be given a two-year probation. And all along, it has seemed that a minister with such vast outreach and lucrative power would be defrocked. In Baton Rouge today, Jimmy Swaggart boarded his private jet along with his wife, Frances. Their destination, Alexandria, Louisiana. There, a 19-member state board of elders will determine if and when Swaggart can return to the Assemblies of God pulpit. He is seeking forgiveness from his wife, his staff, his congregation, and finally his Redeemer for what he calls moral failures. I bow at his feet. who has saved me and washed me and cleansed me. I have sinned against you, my Lord. I don't think there's any question that uh, in the situation that it was not adultery. In Arizona, Reverend Seitz is the top-ranked elected official in the Assemblies of God Church. He says he was saddened watching the confession. But now, there is an overwhelming feeling to forgive and forget. Almost totally. I just talked to our general headquarters on the phone, and uh, there may be a, a very few, but it's, it's so, so minute that it's hard to really isolate. The, the mood is forgiveness. Religious studies professor Russell Willis says if Swaggart becomes a fallen hero in the eyes of his believers, he might actually turn this tragedy into a moral victory of sorts people forgive him, then this could very well be a positive attribute of his ministry. I mean, I am a human being, I, am, I have sinned, and God has very powerfully touched me, and I am continuing in this powerful position. Powerful indeed, Swaggart's fire and brimstone preaching helped build a ministry with an estimated income of $142 million in 1986. And Ted Coppo will take up this issue in greater detail tonight on Nightline, and he will be receiving counseling within the next two years by the program that the state board has outlined for him. All right. Thank you very much, Ann. A little later on on News Channel 3, we'll go live to Calgary to find out why trading clothes is the thing to do this week. But up next, reports tonight that the gunmen who abducted a U.S. Marine in Lebanon have been captured. Introducing the all-new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Once you've driven it, everything else is just traffic. I think of this briefcase as a, a business partner. I've seen a few miles, but I don't make a move without it. My yellow pages? Yeah, they're a partner too. U.S. West Direct. No matter what I'm after, it seems I find it right here. Suppliers, zip codes, maps, all the information I need to make things happen. It's seen a few miles, but it's one partner I couldn't do without. U.S. West Direct, the one that gets used. Anderson's telling the boss we didn't get the business. If your proposals are letting you down, you need Croy Copy Center's computerized page designing service for bold, eye-catching presentations. With Croy, this idea becomes this overhead, this becomes this, and even this. So come to Croy. They did. And we got the business. <laughs> First rate, Anderson. <laughs> Ooh, get back to work. Croy, your image is our business. This is Bell Road Toyota. We're going to be number one. Find out how. Bell Road Toyota, Black Canyon Freeway, east on Bell Road. NBC News is reporting tonight that the gunmen who abducted U.S. Marine William Higgins in Lebanon have been captured now. The network quotes sources who say the gunmen are being interrogated by Shiite Amal militia officers. Meanwhile, Higgins' kidnappers released this videotape today. In the tape, Higgins appears sad but healthy. He lists his captors' demands. The White House says the statement was made under duress. 
News Channel 3 Nightline. Attorney General Edwin Meese has no comment tonight on the classified memo that was released today. The memo which crossed his desk says an arrangement had been made with Israeli leader Shimon Peres to have a portion of oil pipeline payments to Israel go directly to the Israel Labor Party. That action could be illegal. Meese in the past has said he doesn't recall reading that part of the memo. Defense Secretary Frank Carlucci says tonight he's sorry to hear that James Webb is resigning as Secretary of the Navy. Webb stepped down today criticizing Carlucci for abandoning the administration's goal of a 600-ship Navy. And the Windy City lived up to its name today. Winds exceeding 50 miles an hour blew out 19 windows at the Sears Tower in Chicago. Nobody was hurt. Fortunately, we haven't had any kind of windy crazy weather like that. You that know, is amazing. We were about the only place in the country that didn't get a wind today. You saw the, the damage in Chicago. Yeah. It was all over the country. There's a place called Berthet Pass in Colorado that's 12, 14,000 feet high, something like that. Mm -hmm. 120 mile per hour gust today. Hang on to that telephone pole. Yeah. <laughs> something. <laughs> I mean, you could be blown off the street. We'll show you when we get to the map what caused all this, but it was crazy nationwide. Hardly any rain, hardly any snow, just wind. Days for kites, I guess, this afternoon. High temperature for us. Here's our pollen count, first of all, today. Uh, 45 for juniper, ash 36, and grass 28, all in the moderate range. Might be giving some people some problems. 77 degrees is what we topped out at 49, the low. Normal 71 and 43 right now. We have 62 degrees, 32% relative humidity. Winds are calm, a rising barometer, 2997 dew point 32 degrees. Well, first of all, we got a couple of areas of cold weather, as you can see. Cold fronts pressing straight down from Canada, but the cause of the wind was anchored right here at this very strong low pressure system right now in southwest Quebec. Now, everything you may remember, may know, rotates counterclockwise around this high, and it was so strong that we were getting rotations like this out ahead of the cold front, strong southwesterly gusts, 50 to 60 miles per hour. Cleveland and Cincinnati had 60 mile per hour winds. Then on the back side of it, as you can see, it was dragging very strong 40, 50 mile per hour northerly winds, dragging that cold air all the way down throughout the Plain States. Here's the first cold front, and this is not precipitation, mainly high and middle level clouds along that front. And then the second blast of cold air right here, dumping temperatures into the teens tonight with wind chills 20 to 40 below. This is the one that went through Calgary today and dropped their temperatures into the 30s. They were in the 60s over the weekend. So this will affect the weather in the midsection the next couple of days with just bitter cold weather. We have nice clear skies, a little subtropical jet below us dragging some high cirrus clouds. It looks like down the road that the mid-latitude -lati storm systems here will kind of come across and start to affect us. These mainly by drawing up a lot of this moisture the next couple of days and high clouds will seep over the state and by Thursday they will thicken and maybe produce some snow showers. Here are some highs across the nation. 48 at Denver, Calgary, by the way, 31 today. 53 at uh, Kansas City, 63 Indianapolis, Fairbanks with 14, and Atlanta with 64 degrees. Around the Grand Canyon State, Payson 67 today, Flagstaff 57, and we really didn't have much wind at all compared to the rest of the country. Yuma 81, Lake Havasu 76, Tucson 75. Lows for tomorrow, 18 at the South Rim and Flagstaff, 26 at Holbrook and Payson, 33 at Globe and Prescott, 25. Forecast tonight for the greater Phoenix area. Fair overnight low, upper 40s. For tomorrow, high clouds and still warm, 78 degrees. That's above normal. And the cooling off a bit with a uh, bit thickening clouds on Wednesday, 76 degrees. A bit cloudy on Thursday and Friday. Lower temperatures, maybe some snow up north. Chance of rain down here Thursday and Friday. Uh, right now, itsy bitsy, real small. It doesn't. It doesn't look like we're going to get anything, but we'll say there might be a five percent chance. Is that a technical weather term? Itsy, that is. Itsy. It's a new one. Yeah, <laughs> just came out. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> you would expect it to be frigid at the Winter Olympics, right? In Calgary? Well, indeed it is. But just about everybody is prepared for the Calgary cold with coats that carry a message. And Rosemary Collins joins us now from Calgary with an explanation on all of this.
Yep, it is cold here tonight. It has turned very cold. And you see lots of coats bundled up, but that is not all that these coats in the streets of Calgary are good for. We'll explain when we continue with News Channel 3. No, that was... Hi. It's not hard to tell a person's true colors up here in Calgary, nor where their loyalties lie. Just a glance at the parkas protecting folks from the brisk Canadian wind gives you a good idea of who's doing what. All the volunteers for the games are decked out in style, courtesy of the Olympic Organizing Committee. Each of the outfits carries the same colorful logo, but there are different looks for different jobs. The body color, the main color, um, denotes the venue, and the sleeve color denotes the what level of committee you're on. Um, support committee versus support committee, etc. Uh, have different color sleeves, and the gloves go with the sleeves. Now, volunteers aren't the only ones sporting special winter wear. Corporate sponsors have turned jackets into Gore-Tex billboards, gaining both exposure and enthusiasm. Love Calgary, love 3M, <laughs> love this jacket. <laughs> Members of the media are also easy to spot. ABC, for instance, has several different jackets. The people behind the scenes, like photographers, wear one kind, while those in front of the camera wear another. My jacket is different because I'm Talon. So Talon gets the nice blue jackets that go very well. And then if you're really lucky, you get matching sweaters that look very nice. And they bring out the color of the cheeks and all of your eyes and everything. And while protection from the cold may be important, it's not always the main function of these fashions. It's not built for warmth, but it's cute. Very cute. And, of course, you'll also see plenty of nondescript but colorful jackets in the streets of Calgary worn by people like me. They mean absolutely nothing, but Cameron and Heidi, on a night like this, <laughs> they do the trick. We like your jacket just fine. Thank you, Rosemary. Good. A little later, we're going to go back to Calgary and check in with Rock Rote to find out about a U.S. gold medal victory tonight. But first, Dr. Dina Dell with a warning for those of you who uh, wear those sculptured fingernails, the paint on kind. Hello, I'm Dan Grubb for Lou Grubb Chevrolet. One of the most popular cars Chevy has ever produced is the Monte Carlo. Well, 1988 marks the end of an era and the beginning of a classic, because the Monte Carlo will no longer be produced. However, we have a few of these future classics available right now. Stop by and see the Chevy Monte Carlo today here at Lou Grubb Chevrolet. Enjoy quality service at Lou Grubb Mitsubishi, Lou Grubb Hyundai and Suzuki, Lou Grubb Sterling and Lou Grubb Ford. Honey, deposited $300 in checking. Paid visa. Put $500 in money market. Honey, where'd you deposit that $200? Uh, check the money market statement on the desk. Where's the desk? Shouldn't handling everyday banking be simpler than this? Introducing the new City One account from Citibank. It lets you combine checking, savings, even MasterCard and Visa all on one simple statement. Discover City One from Citibank because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. When I told my mom that these egg rolls were from Jack in the Box, she said, you mean Jack Chow's? No, mom, Jack in the Box. She said, but these are real Chinese. You mean Jack Lowe's? No, mom, Jack in the Box. Jack Choice? Jack in the Box. Ah, she said, Jack Holes. Now Jack in the Box restaurants have egg rolls, one of our new finger foods. Serious food that's fun to eat. Then she said, these are as good as Jack in the Box. I found my thrill. <laughs> Hyundai salutes the practical, sensible, non-frivolous youth of America. They've had the wisdom to purchase durable, reliable automobiles with front-wheel drive, room for five, and loads of standard features. All listed prices that start as low as $53.95. Congratulations, young people, and happy driving. Hyundai, cars that make sense. Fake fingernails, or artificial sculptured nails, have become more and more popular over the last few years. But did you know that the glue and materials in the nails is causing a health problem for some people? Dr. Dean Adele shows us tonight why you should be careful if you're wearing those fake nails. 
These days, fashion statements come in all forms, including exotic and colorfully done-up nails. Sculptured nails like these have become increasingly popular in recent years for many reasons. Women who just can't seem to grow long, hard nails can get extensions and wraps using silk or linen and presto. The nails seem to last forever. But these nails aren't such a pretty sight, and dermatologists are beginning to see several new and painful problems associated with the use of glues and acrylics used to bond and sculpt nails. There are people that just plain get allergic to this material, um, and therefore develop the rashes, the irritation, and they need to stop it and can't wear it again. And then some people, because of course you've got a, you've got a heavy covering on your nails, it may stay moist, develop secondary infections. Several months ago, Mrs. Edith Goldman made the painful discovery that she was allergic to cyanoacrylates, the stuff in nail glue that makes it bind so well. Mrs. Goldman had purchased a popular brand of fake nails and applied them herself. And within a very short time, my own nails fell off. All of the nails on my right hand fell off. Uh, Three of the nails on my left hand uh, became dis discolored in that they, well, they seem to be lifted from the nail bed. While some damage is permanent, most of the time your nails will grow back, especially if the problem was an infection or allergic reaction to the glue. We still don't have enough research to tell us just who is at risk from using all the popular nail products. The truth is, most women can wear fake nails or have them sculpted and never develop any difficulties. But if you see signs of an infection or your nail starts to come up, stop whatever nail enhancing process you're using and see your dermatologist immediately. I'm Dr. Dean Adele. Well, let's go back up to Calgary and Rock Road. Gold medal news tonight. You better believe it, Heidi. It's time to roll out the red, white, and blue because Bonnie Blair brings home the gold to the United States. That and more are coming right up. It's your Valley Lincoln Mercury dealer's special shipment sale, now in progress. They've increased their factory orders so they could decrease their prices. Drive a sleek new Mercury Cougar, loaded with features, with prices averaging only $12,388. Enjoy the comfort of full-size styling. The Lincoln Town Car, affordable luxury you never thought possible. The best of both worlds, Cougar styling, Lincoln luxury. Now during the special shipment sale at your Valley Lincoln Mercury dealers, Jack Ross, Fiesta, Sunland, and Covey. You got your script ready? Uh-huh. Okay. These kids are shooting their very own commercial with equipment they've earned by collecting labels. The Campbell Company's Labels for Education program allows schools to earn educational equipment by collecting labels from Campbell products like these at Smitty's. Campbell's Cream of Mushroom and Chicken Noodle Soup, three for a dollar. Franco-American Spaghetti and SpaghettiOs, five for two dollars. And Campbell's V8 and Tomato Juice, 99 cents at Smitty's. Save your labels for education. Anderson's telling the boss we didn't get the business. If your proposals are letting you down, you need to pick up your free 48-page guide to preparing high-quality business presentations. This guide shows you step-by-step -step how this idea can become this. Simply come into any Croy Copy Center. They did. And we got the business. <laughs> First rate, Anderson. <laughs> you get back to work. Croy, your image is our business. The most trouble-free car in its class isn't Honda Civic, isn't Toyota Tercel, isn't Hyundai XL. The Valley Nissan dealers want you to know the most trouble-free car in its class is the best-selling car in its class, the Nissan Sentra. In fact, this Arizona car expert considers the Nissan Sentra in a class all by itself. See the 88 Sentras now at your Valley Nissan dealers, the best cars under the sun. There has been some exciting competition at the Olympics today, and uh, Rock, you saw a lot of it, but uh, there was nothing like watching that gold medal victory. Nothing like it at all. For the second time in three nights, the U.S. team has brought home Olympic gold, and it was done tonight by Bonnie Blair in the 500-meter speed skating event. Of course, it wasn't easy for her because before she skated, East Germany's Christo Rottenberger would skate to a world record time, but then it was Blair's turn to hit the ice. And the gal from Champaign, Illinois, would never look back. And not scratch. You get too in, try too hard to get up on your toes. 39-12. 
She got it. She got it. Bonnie Blair would set a new world record and win by just two one hundredths of a second with a time of 39.1 seconds. And after receiving her well-deserved gold medal, she said she knew she had it all the way. Actually, when she skated, I knew just from skating in the, this past week that I had done a faster lap time than, than she did. So I knew that I was capable of going faster. And, you know, I, I had an excellent first 100 meters, and yeah. I knew I got her right there. <laughs> So you can add another gold medal to the group for the United States. Of course, that group of medals is not that big. They still trail the, the biggies by quite a bit. Let's take a look at the rundown. The Soviets now have 18 total medals, followed by East Germany at 14, Austria and Switzerland at 7 apiece, and the USA has 4 medals total. Well, even with another postponement today, there, will, there were still plenty of Olympic events taking place. Right now, let's hit the slopes. At Mount Allen, things were back on schedule for the first time since the Olympics began. Today, the women's supergiant slalom, sort of a downhill with more gates. Favorite Sigrid Wolf of Austria finished exactly one second ahead of silver medalist Michaela Figini. Canada's Karen Percy earned her second bronze of these games, matching her performance in the downhill. 1984 medalist Debbie Armstrong finished just two and a half seconds behind the winner, but ended up in 18th place. Wind postponed the 90-meter ski jump once again, the third time the event has been rescheduled. But the forecast calls for light winds tomorrow, not a moment too soon for Finland's Matti Nukaden, who is looking for his second gold medal. The two-man bobsled, delayed yesterday by high winds, was completed today, with the Soviets unseating the defending 84 gold medalists from East Germany. The top sled for the U.S. finished a disappointing 16th place. In ice hockey, the medal round is complete. The host Canadians will compete as part of the final six, but their chances at a medal are slim since they managed only a tie against Sweden today. That means they will trail all five of the other teams to reach the medal round in total points. Here's your score, Canada 2-2 and Sweden today. Finland beats Poland 5-1, so here's your top six teams going to the medal round. The Soviets, West Germans, Czechoslovakians, then Canada, Finland, and Sweden. Let's change gears now to go to the NBA. The Suns taking on the Mavericks in Dallas. In the first half, the Suns looked good, but in the second half, they were trailing by 11, but Walter Davis scored 14 of his 22 points in the fourth quarter to bring the Suns back. The Mavericks, Roy Tuffley, would be just too much off the bench. Career-high 27 points for him and 23 rebounds. The final score, Dallas 114, Phoenix 107. Round of the rest of the NBA, it was Boston over New York by 295-93. Houston 119-106 over Philadelphia. Denver a 187 win over Washington. In the third right now, Golden State leading San Antonio 66-56. College troops, a big upset tonight. Seton Hall over sixth-ranked Pittsburgh. 89 to 72, and it was Michigan over Michigan State, 77 to 67. Cameron and Heidi, finally, I'm getting my voice back. I'm drinking plenty <laughs> of hot tea, and I'm going to take it back in where it's nice and warm now. Tomorrow night at 5 o'clock, we're going to show you how you can actually take part in a little bobsledding without getting any kind of danger. I like that. All right. Take care of yourself. Good night, Rob. All right. February 22nd. Do you know whose birthday that is? Well, we're going to have the answer for you when we come back, plus a look at how they marked the occasion in the nation's capital. Another 30 seconds of common sense. Shop around, and you'll find that the average price of a used car today is almost $6,000. Lots of money for a car you know nothing about from someone you'll probably never see again. Especially when you can buy this brand new Hyundai Excel for just $53.95, or this four-door for just $59.95. Ever think you'd see the day when a new car would become a sensible alternative to a used car? Think about it. Test drive and excel at your greater Phoenix Hyundai dealer. We sell cars that make sense. Maribank was there when you first knew that you and horses were going to do very big things together. Are you thirsty? And now, as you build your dream into a very big thing indeed... Be there for tomorrow, but be there for today. Helping people build their dreams has made Merabank one of the strongest banks in the West. You know what drives me nuts about the valley? It's not the traffic, not even this governor thing. It's the radio. Check it out. You've been illin'. 
How about a station with no punk, no funk, and no elevator junk? The choice is easy. The all-new Easy Rock 99.9. .9. Seeger, Springsteen, Fleetwood Mac, no wimpy light rock. Just rock and roll without the metal edge. Easy Rock 99.9. .9. The all-new Easy Rock 99.9. .9. In a dark time, the eye begins to see. It's sometimes difficult to imagine that suffering in bad times can lead to greater insight and understanding. But we at St. Luke see it happening every day, and we have for the past 18 years. Chronic pain, stress, alcohol and drugs, depression, and other emotional problems affecting children, adolescents, and adults. In a dark time, there is help and hope from St. Luke's Behavioral Health Services. We'd almost forgot because it's become one big federal holiday now honoring the presidents, but there was a special birthday celebration in the nation's capital. A wreath-laying ceremony commemorating our first president's birthday took place at the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument Society, U.S. Park Police, and members of the House of Representatives took part in the ceremony honoring George Washington. And that's our news for now. Thanks a lot for being with us. The Olympic wrap-up show is next. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody.